What's up, everybody? I'm back. <laughs> and we're here with a new rebrand. This channel, formerly known as me or M-E, my hook and die, is now rebranded to Betsy and Stitches. So if I'm here, you may can guess that I've had a few health setbacks and until about May-ish, I was still working at CNT Publishing, which is a fantastic craft quilt um, art book publisher. And they tried to hold on to me for as long as they could. They were really great. But eventually we had to part ways just knowing that I was not as reliable with my health as I could have been. But I did some really fun things while I was there. So this video is going to be partially a catch up of the last three years and partially a little update on my health and the relaunch of the channel. So let's get into it. I'm going to do all the fun crafty stuff first because some of you may not care about the chronic illness part. So first we're going to start out with some of the fun things that I did at CNT Publishing. And if you're new here, I started out there as an administrative assistant and that was wonderful and lovely. We had some transitions in the company. They discovered that I was a pretty decent writer and I started to doing more copyright for them. So I wrote blog posts and email marketing and all that. And I did a fabulous job at it. Unlike here, because if I could be as consistent and like wonderful at it as I was when I was working with them, I'd probably still be working with them. So don't let my like, I don't know, however this pans out to be a reflection of the work that I did, which is a shame, but you know, this is where we are right now. This is my health right now. Um, I am currently working on building a Betsy and Stitches website where I hope to offer patterns and maybe even sell some things. Um, that's going to be in the works for a couple months. It's going to take me a while to get there because now that I know what I'm doing with digital marketing, websites, email campaigns, that sort of thing, I'm really particular <laughs> how they come out. And I just, you know, like I said, I don't have the energy or the health to do that on like a super quick schedule or else I would still probably have my job. But to show you some of the fun things that I got to do while I was at CNT Publishing, I thought I would do a little show and tell and then a little show and tell of just some personal things that I've been working on. And then I'll be updating you on getting my Crojo back in another video because I, I started to crochet again. It is so super easy to do in bed when I have a good day, when I have a bad day, when I have a good day, I probably could go up to my sewing room and do more. But I found my Crojo again, so that's gonna require its own separate video. But let's get into the fun things that I was able to do in the two and a half inch ish inch. <laughs> that's punny. Uh, two and a half ish years that I worked there. So CNT Publishing, if you don't know, is a quilt and craft book publisher, but they also have an online learning center, and I worked with both. And so for Creative Spark, the name of the online learning center, I did a little small class for this handmade holiday thing. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore. It was a one-time live event, but I made, and I will try to link all the books that these patterns come from in the description. And if I can figure out how to do Amazon, I might get a little commission. I will put that, I will put that in the comments if that's a thing. So... I made a sunglass holder. So this is out of, I think, one hour gifts. And I used some of our vegan leather, which is called Craftex. And I ran it through um, like a Sizzix dye machine and embossed it. So it has this really cool swirly pattern. It's got a snap and cute little lining and your glasses fit right in there. So that was for a handmade holiday project. So I can't link the class, but I can link the book that this came in. So that was super fun. One of the very first things that I did was a blog for this table runner. This is from one, one weekend makes or one, one weekend gifts. I'll, I'll link the actual book 
in the comments. It was these gorgeous flying geese blocks, if you know what that is for quilting. And um, I always, or used to, I was a lot better before. <laughs> I used to cut up all of my leftover fabric in two and a half inch strips. And so this, if you see a fabric that you like in this, it is probably not available anymore because this is so, these fabrics are so old. They've been in my stash forever. So that was an awesome scrap buster. I was super pleased how it turned out. I will link the book and, well, actually I'll link the blog in the description so you can go check that out and the book is linked in the blog. Um, the other thing I got to do was this super cute, oh no, we're mirrored, maybe I can fix that in editing. Anyway, this super cute cross stitch called This Kitchen, or that says This Kitchen is for Dancing. It was super awesome. The cross stitch book was 365 cross stitch designs, and I backed it with some really cute scrapbook paper that matched. And it goes on my piano, which coincidentally is in my kitchen. <laughs> I'll post a little picture of that if I can get it cleaned off um, so you can kind of see what that looks like um, and why it's in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I did, and I haven't quilted this yet, but, oh, and I will link, if there is a blog post for this, I can't remember if this was just a sample. If there is a blog post for this, I'll link it. If not, I'll just put the book. This is a quilt that I was making for my daughter and I am currently not strong enough to quilt it. So it is sitting in its unquilted form <laughs> and I chose to back it in this really cute cat head tabby cat fleece and it's so heavy but wonderful and it's going to be an awesome quilt once I finally quilt it. It is from just two charm packs. Charm packs are five and a half inch squares. Oop, that's upside down. This is the fabric line reading nook from Ruby Star Society. And that's like an Essex linen that has this, these pops of color in it. I don't know if you can see it, you can kind of see it there. And eventually I will get to quilt this, but that is in this really cute book by Cheryl Bricky called Just Two Charm Pack Quilts. That's actually the quilt pattern that I did. And I love Cheryl's patterns. She does a lot of them for free on her website um, called meadowmistdesigns.com. I will link that as well. But this book is like quilting for people who have lives or limited energy output <laughs> because they are all like super easy to make and chain sew and just get it done. So there's that. I don't think I did a blog post for that. So I'll just link the book. And then this was a staff challenge that I did as like a Valentine's Day um, Almost everyone on the CNT staff does um, some sort of quilting, crafting, something. They're all creative people. And so we did a Valentine's Day challenge where everybody had to come up with a craft for Valentine's Day. And I'll link that blog post so you can see what my coworkers did. This is actually four blocks from the Quilt Builder card deck volume one. And I made this cute little XOXO Valentine wall hanging. So I got to write to other people who love crafty stuff and share crafty stuff that I make and it was wonderful and awesome until I got COVID in September of last year. And of course, like everybody like who does something creative for work at a certain point, it's still for work, right? So while it was a great luxury to get to do that, I loved every single part of my job. I still had things that I really enjoyed making just for myself. So I thought I would share a few of those. The most recent thing I made is a Sally Tomato clutch bag. 
And this is, ooh, I'm gonna have to look up what this fabric is and put it in the description because I totally forgot, I didn't remember. But this is Craftex, which is the same vegan leather product that this was, except for this time I just um, softened it in by like boiling it and putting it in softener. If y'all are interested in working with anything like this, I'll do like a Craftex tips and tricks video. But I don't know how much y'all are going to love sewing since this was formerly just a crochet channel. But um, this was a kit of hardware that I got from Sally Tomato at her booth, with the exception of this guy. I bought that on Amazon. <laughs> um, that I bought from Sally Tomato at QuiltCon in 2023 in Atlanta. And it's got cool little... Another little craft tech section. There's my CVS card, like a good chronic illness patient. <laughs> um, so I sewed that out of some orange craft techs for a card holder. And then I added the zipper pocket here because I mean, when you can add your own zipper pocket, like why not? And look at the lining. That's what I love is pretty lining inside a bag. <laughs> And it's been a while since I made a bag. So this was a total victory. And she has these cute little metal hardware that say handmade. It's just stinking adorable. And then I had to use my fussy cut tag from Sarah Hart's labels because I fussy cut the cats to be centered on here, not just there, but these two as well. And that was a lot of fun. So. That was a just for me project. And then I joined the Knoxville Modern Quilt Guild shortly after I started working at CNT just so I could be with other quilters again because it had been a while since I was able to sew. And we did a um we did a mini quilt challenge for a local show that we were all given this color purple right here and we all had to come up with a mini quilt less than 20 inches by 20 inches to put into the show to work with this purple stuff and it was so cool to see just how completely and totally different all of these quilts were i mean there's just some amazingly talented creative people in the Knoxville modern quilt guild and that was super fun but this was my contribution so I made a mountain sunrise. I designed the pattern myself. The sun rays are paper pieced with an appliqued sun over it. And then I appliqued the mountains down onto a piece of muslin. So everything is on one piece of fabric. And then I wanted that kind of art deco 80s vibe of puff quilting. So this is using a polyester loft quilt. But then I stitched in the ditch with my machine like three or four times. My cat is playing with the blinds. <laughs> three or four times to get it to puff up really good, but that still wasn't quite enough. So I went in with some hand quilting in the center of the rays. And then again, along the seam of the sun and the mountains to get that nice puffy dimension. And I'm super proud. This is the first quilt I have ever designed solely on my own. So that was really cool. And one of my favorite things at CNT continues to be the quilt labels because you can, they're iron on transfers and then you can um, color them in, paint them in, you can embroider them or do what I did, which was trace it with a micron pen. And this is from the book Sassy Quilt Labels. And literally, so that was the label. I, I accidentally covered it up with my binding, I mean, my facing. But it says, Phew, finished the day before due, <laughs> February 18th. So that was the meeting um, that we had to turn these in for the show in March. And I finished it under the wire because I did not expect that I was going to have to hand quilt and do extra stitching and all that to get the puffy look I liked but anyway that's where we're at and I'm so happy with how it turned out I just I adore it and then I started a if, if you're a quilter you will know the tulip pink queen of diamonds 
block of the month club and i don't know that i necessarily do it again because there were some major issues with this pattern and the amount of extra fabric you get with it is a little over the top i'm sorry what is my cat doing star must be a lizard or something my bad okay so i have done english paper piecing which is where you cover fabric with these little pieces of paper and then you sew them together and it's supposed to be over now but you know with all the things that i have been making and all my health issues and all that stuff i have about 11 months done oh you're upside down um, not all 11 months are here because I couldn't grab all of them to show, but anyway, so that was, that's been a really nice, good hand sewing project, but the sicker I got, the harder that was to do. Um, okay. They look cute, but they a mess. I had to stop <laughs> and help a kitty out. And yes, I did a wardrobe change. <laughs> sort of, kind of. I almost forgot to tell you about the most awesome thing that I made while I was gone. And again, this was with the Knoxville Modern Quilters Guild. And it's my quilted jacket. I had this thing fitting me to a T. Um, I believe it's the chore coat and I forget the designer but like I said, I'll link that in the comments. But I had, I did so many modifications to get this to fit that I'm not even sure it's exactly the same pattern anymore. But, okay, I've also gained some weight, so now it kind of like barely fits, but I would like to show you. Look at my pockets! And I made it a little draft here so you could so it would cover my bum bum go down so that's got a cool little line and this linen y'all it's to die for also i used a bamboo um what's the word batting because like i couldn't do wool and cotton is kind of stiff um so i did bamboo and i love the way the quilting took to it and it's like the perfect weight for a fall coat because it's not too hot. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee now. And like in the fall, there's not always a whole lot of um, opportunities for jackets in the fall, but um, you could wear it year round. This is, um, oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking. I'm blanking on everything today, I'm sorry. I was just excited to launch my channel, but it's not a good brain day. But this linen, can you see? It has like this textured X's in it that are kind of embroidered. I don't know. But this is an art gallery fabric. It's no longer around, but I used, I made these blank yeast pockets. The other pockets were like angled and I just didn't really care for them. And I used that to bind it as well. And then it wanted you to cover literally every single seam with the webbing. And I was like, forget that. That's going to take forever. So the only one that I really couldn't do that with was the one where you attach the hood. Because it's really thick. And I wanted a loop. The rest of the seams. Oh yeah. Do you see that? Perfect professional looking flat fell seams. I am so stinking proud of this quilt jacket. I'm a little sad it's so tight in the arms now that I've gained weight, but I will get better again because I got better once or something and lose weight and it'll fit again. So that is really the most of what I've been up working on in the last two or so years. There are also like a thousand whips, if I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but there are also tons of crochet that'll be coming up in another video. And now I'm gonna give you my health update. So if you're not interested in that, that's what the rest of the video will be like. And um, come back soon for the crochet content.
Okay, so now for the hard part and kind of why I'm back. Um, so I was not, <laughs> I was not the, um, the best decision maker when I got well. I sort of jumped into working a little bit too hard and I ended up taking a director of church music position, which is what my degree is in in addition to working full-time at CNT. Now, somebody tell the girl with chronic illnesses, I think my Emmy CFS is still in remission because I just don't have post-exertional malaise the way I do, but I've had POTS and dysautonomia there's, since I was in high school. And um, I've been told that a lot of other POTS and dysautonomia patients really struggle after COVID. I managed to go three full years without getting it. And then, you know, the inevitable happened in September of last year. Well, I was already feeling like I wasn't able to keep up with my workload. So I had reduced my hours at CNT to part-time to try to hang on to the church music position. But it was also getting kind of difficult for me to show up for command performance because basically when you're the music director like you got to be there to direct the choir you got to plan the worship you got to I had an accompanist so I wasn't playing thank goodness unless she was out for some reason but I was really having trouble keeping up and then in September I got COVID right after I had kind of reduced my hours at CNT in August we had planned our very first family vacation for the three of us right on the tail end of all three of us getting COVID to Williamsburg, Virginia. And I jumped right in and that was also not the best decision. I should have given my body more time to rest, but I didn't because it was our first vacation. It was kind of a big deal. We were celebrating that I was well enough to take a family vacation. I got to go tour the tailor shop and the miller millinery. I mean, I was a kid in a candy store. I was also really struggling. Um, and then after that, I just, I could not keep up. And I could not, I, I was just having to take off time a lot. Um, I was pulling back some of the stuff I was doing at my music job to try to manage life. And honestly, for like six months, my therapist <laughs> was like, you cannot keep this pace and you should always listen to your therapist because they're telling you the hard truths and that's part of the reason you go. Um, so I barreled into December and we had a cantata and then we had really massive Christmas Eve service. At the same time, our membership was booming, which is, it's not a good time to be the church right now. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed. Um, so it's kind of a big deal that our church was growing. The music ministry was growing. So I, I sort of just, I don't know how I did it. But I'll tell you how I did it. I went straight through. I crashed so hard the week before Christmas. I don't know. Like God alone is what got me through Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, my blood pressure started to tank. It was like 85 over 48. Um, and my parents were like, you've got to go to the ER. And I'm like, I am not going to the ER on Christmas Day. <laughs> no. Um, so I chugged as much as I could. I ate as much salt as I could. This whole time, I have still been taking propranolol to manage my tachycardia, but I had just gotten my port out in April, having not needed intravenous fluids for two years. I, I took two years before I took the port out. And the next day, I was like, okay, if it doesn't improve, I will go to the ER. Here comes the cat. You say hi, Star? So, long story short, the next day, no cap out on camera. Hi, Stella. Hey, Elmer, too. 
sorry for the kitty interlude. The next day was a Sunday, so my husband, and it was the Sunday after Christmas, so we didn't really expect to have that big of a crowd. So it was okay that I missed. We just said that I was sick. The choir wasn't gonna do anything anyway because they had literally just sung their hearts out on Christmas Eve. Um, my husband went to church, he came home and I was basically non-responsive um, and it scared me. So I couldn't even really speak to him enough to tell him to call 911. And so I kind of signed it to him and the um, EMTs came. That was a freaking nightmare. I am not going to go into it right now. Um, I ended up being admitted into the hospital for three days and I received six bags of fluid. They ran a battery of tests and they said, we're sorry, but this is just a huge POTS flare. Um, and a huge dysautonomia flare. Well, don't do what I did, which was, I was well, and I went more than a year seeing my cardiologist who has his own autonomic clinic in Woodstock, Georgia, and therefore is crazy inundated with patients. And you have to see him once a year to be able to see the nurse practitioner. And he couldn't get me in for another six months. And my GP kept running a battery of tests. I kept telling her, like, I know what this is. She did not feel comfortable with giving me intravenous fluids. Um, and I'm like, this is literally the thing that rehabbed me from basically being bed bound. And you're telling me you're not willing to do it. She just wanted me to wait until May. And so um, CNT was very generous. They gave me a three month leave of absence. When I tried to come back, it was still about two months from my appointment in Atlanta. So I was having to travel an hour. Oh, I ended up going to a cardiologist here in Knoxville who was willing to fill the IV fluid prescription, um, but only for like three or four weeks. So I improved and then it was like, we're not doing it. This is the BS I put up with. And then in May, when I finally got to see Dr. Snapper, um, I had started to freelance since I couldn't fully go back to work. But Dr. Snapper called in um, outpatient infusion to while we were waiting to basically get a port in my chest which meant I was driving all the way to the infusion center in Halls because the downtown hospital was not, anyway, it was a 45 minute drive, three times a week, an hour for fluids, and then a 45 minute um, drive back. So I had told CNT, like I'm gonna take May and June off of freelancing and finally get like the ball rolling on my port get to where I'm not spending basically like a full part-time job trying to get out to get fluids to feel better because then I was just worn out that I went to go get fluids. Um, and I'll come back in June. And when I tried to come back in June, they said, hey, like the freelance thing is not really working out. Um, it's just like too much. And we really need another person to basically replace you as a full-time person. Um, and so we parted ways like as best as we could. And here we are. Um, I got my port in July again. So I have a nice little port there. I get fluids every day now instead of three times a week. And I'm slowly crawling out of my hole. But I think what I'm most grateful for is my cat. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Mommy's, mommy's doing a video. What I'm most grateful for is that I'm able to do um, a reset button and be very intentional. I did not understand or remember 
how much energy it was going to take to hold down a job, be a mom, be a wife, and all of that. And um, if anything, I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this differently this time. Um, so yeah, so I have big plans for the channel um, because my favorite part of my job was getting to talk to other crafty people. I want to start a blog on a Betsy and Stitches website that I'm currently working on. Um, I want to sell some crochet items, maybe make some patterns here and there, but also I want to keep sewing. In fact, I'm declaring this year my garment sewing era because garments are so much quicker to make than quilts. <laughs> I have so many whip quilts right now just because they take so long and so much energy to make. So that's why we're rebranding the channel as Betsy in Stitches to cover all the things that are in stitches, including myself. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate a good pun. Betsy in Stitches covers crochet, embroidery, cross stitch. I'm still not a good knitter, y'all. I'm still a terrible knitter. Um, it covers myself <laughs> when I have surgeries and I end up in the hospital, you know, because, like, that's a thing. Um, and it covers, like, my sense of humor that maybe I'll leave you in stitches laughing at some point. I hope. Maybe. So, if you're new and you're like, you've been on here for three like three years ago, who cares? I don't know who you are. Well, stick around, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, tell me who you are, where you're from, and what kind of crafty content you wanna see most, and we'll get this thing going again. See you soon.